Rick Durst, and this presentation is on spelling church. More precisely, how did Jesus spell or do church? Uh, we find that in Matthew chapter 16, the Gospel of Matthew, verses 15 to 19, but particularly verse 19, uh, which is one of the most terrific and terrifying verses in Scripture. Thankfully, it's repeated in John 20, 23, when Jesus breathes on the apostles. Uh, and this verse sets the mission of the church. The church really becomes functional when it understands its mission of carrying heaven's keys. Now, let's work on this passage. Uh, the story starts with Jesus asking the apostles a question. Who do you say that I am? Peter responds by making a confession. You're the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And so the first, the C in, in confessing is confessing Christ. However, it's not enough just to confess Christ. At the end of this passage, verses 20 to 23, Jesus begins to explain, as you follow me as your Lord and Savior, you will follow me and see me on the cross. And uh, so it's confession of Christ and the cross. Incidentally, Peter gets an A on this part of the exam and an F on this part because he was resistant to following Christ to the cross because of what it might cost him. If we are going to be the church, it's going to have to be costly. No cheap seats. There is a real cost to discipleship, as Dietrich Bonhoeffer spoke of it. Uh, the H in this is when Jesus writes on... Uh, Peter's exam, so to speak, after he confesses Christ, he says, Blessed are you, Simon. Blessed are you, Simon, Peter. You haven't thought of this yourself. Nobody's told you the answer. But you have heard the voice of the Father. My Father has revealed this to you. So hearing the Father's voice. And this is the theology of the church. We're supernaturalists. We believe there is a God who is active and moving. We're conversionists. When God speaks to us, it changes the direction that we're going in. That's our theology. We base our membership on confession of Christ and the cross. Anybody who comes to the door called Christ is welcome. Our theology is both supernaturalist and conversionist. And what about our security, the security of the church? Uh, how shall we survive? And Jesus said, to be under my authority. It's always wise to pay attention to pronouns, people's possessive pronouns. If they're talking about my church, usually they're being protected. If they're talking about their church, they are usually uh, have been offended in some fashion. But the church we want to belong to is not my church or your church, but his church. And Jesus says, on this confession, I will build my church. Um, as a believer's church person, I believe that the church needs to operate with Jesus as boss. Which means that we need to operate everything in according to the scriptures as we converse together and get consensus about what God's will is. The last two letters, the R, um, is resisting the enemy. Jesus says, when we live this way together, confessing Christ in the cross, hearing the Father's voice under Christ's authority, the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against us. Now, this verse says that Peter is carrying the keys of heaven. Two pages later, in Matthew 18, 15 and following, the keys are actually in the hands of all the disciples. Anyone who is committed to following Christ becomes a key-carrying Christian. And we are to practice reconciliation with, with one another. Matthew 18, 15 says, if your brother or your sister sins against you, go to them in private to reconcile when we are obedient to Jesus at Matthew 18, 15, in carrying out his mission of carrying the keys, the gates of hell can't prevail. When we don't do that, the gates of hell do prevail against the church. Now, verse 19, this terrific and terrifying verse about the keys of the kingdom. Jesus says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth, bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. This relates to the rabbinical task of helping people interpret in Scripture what they must do and what they don't necessarily need to do uh, in keeping the Sabbath, in obeying God's Word. Uh, the expectation of God is that we will voluntarily put ourselves under the authority of Scripture. 
Now think about this. Jesus was asked two kinds of questions. Really, only two kinds. First one, how do I get into the kingdom of heaven? Obviously, Jesus brings the kingdom. How can we get into the kingdom? Entrance questions. If you want to say it, evangelism questions. The other side of it is, how do I live in a kingly way? That's an ethical question. Now that I've gotten into the kingdom, how do I live for the king? How do I live in a royal way? Our job, the mission of the church, is to hear people asking those questions and bring scriptural answers to them. So that no one is locked out of the kingdom who would enter in, and no one who would like to live the treasures of the kingdom of heaven in an ethical fashion uh, will be without the knowledge and insight uh, in, in order to live uh, in that heavenly way. Uh, the authority of believers by the Spirit of Christ in carrying heaven's keys. Next time you take hold of your car keys and your house keys and your treasure keys, think about the keys of heaven that you and I have in the Spirit of Christ in obedience to Scripture. That's when we're spelling church like Jesus said to do it. Thanks for watching.